You know, on occasion, we talk about how unfair or unkind our spouse is to us, but how often do we consider our own slip-ups that way? I think it's worth a few minutes of honest introspection, maybe, say the length of this podcast, because the reality is, if your spouse is not seeing things your way or acquiescing to your point of view or not changing their behavior out of love and concern for you, and you're getting emotional about it, you can bet that the way you are communicating with them is having the opposite effect. There are just certain approaches, I'll just say it, disrespectful approaches that only dampen or damage your loved one's desire to be loved by you or to love you. Listen, there's a better way. And in today's episode, we're going to show it to you. Enjoy. Bags are packed. Are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road. Riding with you in the sunnier days. I wouldn't want it any other. Welcome to the Wife Savers Podcast, where multi-award winning author and global marriage educator Ramona Zabriski provides answers to your real wife questions. Our goal is to help you appreciate your womanhood, prioritize your personal development, and craft a powerful partnership with the man in your life. Hi, I'm Hannah Allen, and I'm proud to introduce my parents, Ramona and Dale Zabriskie. And yes, this is how they talk all the time. Let's listen. Hi, this is Dale Zabriskie, sitting across the table from Ramona Zabriskie, and I'm happy to be here looking at you. It's a little different. It's different than what I've been staring. Actually, I have been staring at you. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's... Finishing up these YouTube videos that we've been uh, creating. You have been, been creating. the editor for our videos on our new YouTube channel, Wife Savers by Ramona. So hopefully the fans of the new YouTube channel are saying, whoa, Dale did all that amazing editing. <laughs> That's right. The first thing that they noticed <laughs> was all the great editing. Yeah, they noticed you before they noticed me, right? But that is funny. I do get a little self-conscious thinking about you staring at me for hours <laughs> and hours. Right. And I know, just tell the truth right now, you have a lot of fun stopping the video mm. when I'm in a really mm-hmm. compromised facial expression. I uh, I have quite a catalog of uh, <laughs> all the different expressions. And you're going to show the blooper reel. Yes, my funeral, exactly. Right? The blooper. Don't you dare. Blooper reel is uh, being compiled <laughs> as we speak. Our most recent video on the Wife Savers by Ramona YouTube channel is called "Ouch, His Criticism Hurts." What to do when your guy or your man is unfair or unkind? Well, that never happens. I, <laughs> yeah, it never happens so much. It's going to go through the <laughs> roof. I know it's going to be our most popular video on YouTube, unfortunately. But I was thinking recently that there's probably a lot of guys out there looking for a podcast or a YouTube tutorial called her criticism hurts, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, sure. And so just to be fair, I thought we'd do a podcast along those lines. Uh-huh. Because here's the letter from one of my reader, listener, followers. She says, Dear Ramona, my husband says I'm too critical, but I don't see it. <laughs> What's he seeing that I'm not? Uh, or hearing, perhaps. Isn't that interesting? Well, I think that's that's pretty, uh, unfortunately, common where, you know, you feel that you're, you're in, in your right, right way right. and that the way you may have said something or addressed something is yeah. totally yeah. acceptable and, and fine. And why is and, the other person Yeah, yeah, offense? deal with it. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I really do address that uh, in depth in those uh part one and yes, part you two do. on YouTube. So I hope That's everyone right. will go look at those videos. But let's look at it from his point of view. What if you are displeased? I, let's just let's just use the word displeased to cover a kind. lot of uh, a lot of perceptions and feelings. So if you're displeased with him, 
how do you convey that without wrapping it in a blanket of disrespect? Mm, mm, right? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. how important is respect to a guy from your point of view? It's everything. I think that um, because, you know, part of it's ego, right? I'm, okay. I'm, uh, it's important for me to be liked and taken care of and respected and listened to and my opinion counts. And so it's very critical because it's so, fa I, I don't, to me, it's so foundational in the relationship that how can you move forward? How can you do anything, plan anything, mm -hmm. discuss anything? You can't build, build on or, the or, relationship. Or deal with the challenges that life naturally brings. Right. If you're constantly fighting disrespect. Yeah, right. And women are very uh, sensitive to feeling disrespected. But they're even more sensitive, in my experience, with feeling disloved. Yeah. Or what I'm yeah. saying is disconnected. Yeah. Right? But I think that the respect thing is where you see a lot of... Uh, I think men and women are like, especially to the kids, you need to respect me, you know, yeah. you respect me. Right, right. But right. there isn't anything backwards or, or towards the kid. Oh, interesting. That may, well, that's another whole dynamic. Yeah, we could that, make a podcast on that one. But but showing respect as yeah. opposed to demanding. Oh, good. Right. So demanding respect. Oh, Wow, that's a thinker. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to mull that one over. That's very interesting. Well, I'm d demanding so, that you do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the assignment. <laughs> so, what I want to do today in this episode is really hmm, shine a light. Let's put it that way on the approaches that we, meaning humanity, but women, we're talking to you, that we commonly fall into when we're upset with him that actually undermine him. Now, this is the man that's supposed to be our partner. Mm -hmm. And we're actually sabotaging him. And these are kind of the go-to natural These are just the responses. common, very, yeah. very common okay. things that we don't even think about. We're inadvertent about it, right? And we end up doing what? Making things worse. And more mm, unhappy yeah. than ever. And not only in the intermediate, or the immediate, sorry, not only even the immediate or intermediate, let's put it the way, but in the long term. So we're going to, let's talk about this. We're going to reframe what her message is so that she can actually make things better because that's what we want, it's right? All, we all just want to make things better. It's all in the reveal, right? It's all in how you, <laughs> so how you present things. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Magician. That's it's right. all in the it's reveal. all about the reveal. You know, what got me thinking about this really was a uh, episode of Rick Steves Travel. If you're a PBS mm -hmm, fan mm -hmm. of the Rick Steves Travel shows, European right? Travel. And he, in this episode, he was walking through the Cotswolds of England. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Cotswolds. Good. Yeah. So the Cot Cotswolds, no, I'll never say it again <laughs> yes, correctly. Right. Yeah, you got one. <laughs> you know, you me. only get one. <laughs> they are designated by that nation as an area of outstanding natural beauty. Okay, yeah. so those are capitalized area of outstanding national beauty. And that it's the largest one in England and Wales. So what I saw in this episode were these rolling hills and valleys and villages that mm -hmm. just kind of ah, they just sort of pop out of the landscape. Yeah, that's They're England. just so isn't it? Yeah. It's so England. And what it really is is what makes it so famous is not only this natural beauty, but a hundred mile footpath. One hundred miles? Yes. Footpath for hikers, for walkers, that crosses and winds around this, the Cotswolds. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what's interesting about that footpath is it's crossing and going through constantly private property. Oh, well, it'd have to, I would think. Right. And how private property is designated there is these low stone walls. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we've seen them, right? We've been up high in a castle and looked down and right. seen the low For stone sure. walls. But there are gates in those walls. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those gates are intentionally left open and unlocked. So walkers are just, yeah, come they on, can they're come totally through. welcome to pass through and to enjoy the vistas from any vantage point. Even if it's on someone's private property, they're just... 
flocks do? And, and historically, they, those stones were taken out of the ground so they could farm the land. Ah, and make and good use of them make, as walls. Them I remember that now. That's right. Yeah, they do that in New England. Now, imagine, New England. <laughs> so I hope that creates an image mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. the listener's mind that you'll keep in mind now as we go on to talk about this, because let's go back to respect and what respect breeds in a relationship. It breeds, I'll just give you the answer, emotional safety. Yeah, that, as I'm saying, it's foundational to everything and you feel safe and secure and in relaxed. moving forward. Yeah, you're not uh, right. having to worry. I like to, you said free. You feel free to let your guard down, right? To show your real self, yeah, your, true your self. authentic self, yeah. including what, your hurts, mm-hmm, fears, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. longings, dreams, so forth. So you don't need to feel defensive when there's nothing to defend against. Be defended, yeah. Right, right, right. right. And you, when you feel constantly respected and treated with kindness and care by someone who's, you know, they're trying hard to be their best self, that lets you relax into your best self. Absolutely. I, yeah, it's uh, symbiotic. How's that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It, it's you develop a sort of culture and a reciprocal mm-hmm, mm-hmm. thing going on in the relationship. And, and, and what happens when you're mean and disrespectful? Yeah, well, it locks everything up and closes oh, it off. Locks the, the gate. gate. Exactly. Right. See how I did that? <laughs> exactly. That's right. And I really believe I said this just this week in our live labs with our wife saver students that and it really resonated with them. They said, Oh, we really like that. That I believe that when we get into those disrespectful kind of treatment behavior of others, that it, it's not our real selves. I call it the counterfeit self because I really believe that the real us, for the most part, wants to be nice, <laughs> wants to be good and loved and connected to others in a yeah, real authentic absolutely. way. But when our counterfeit self gets in the way, then we shrink into these defensive right? Behaviors that are hurtful. And how many things are, are happening today in the world that are safety oriented to yes. protect us from so actions of somebody who are who is being disrespectful to, to like, whatever, to like boundaries, a, uh, yes. online, online. Or, or physical mm-hmm. boundaries. And yeah, I'm everybody always, talks about yeah, boundaries. Bemoaning, right. bemoaning the fact that I have to go through all these steps to to buy a razor at the store or something, <laughs> yes. right? It just it's just yeah. permeating everything. And it's really because We're all always on the defense. Yeah. Yeah. It, because people are not respecting either the property or the process. Yes. And so uh, what happens? Or the space of others. There's no trust. Right. And when the trust breaks down, the yeah. gate is closed That's and it. locked. Wow. I'm thinking about these property owners in the Cotswold who just trust People are generally good and are going to hurt their property and are going to respect their property. Well, you know, the Aretha Franklin song, Respect. Yes, and know, I can never say it. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I that's can spell too it, hard maybe. for me to say. <laughs> too many especially syllables. that fast. But if, you, but if you look at the lyrics of that song, it's, it's, trying, it's about the woman trying to create a reciprocal, trusting relationship. Wait a minute. I heard that song was written by a man. Well, she's singing it. Is all right. <laughs> she made it her own. <laughs> And so, it's true. We all want it. We yeah, all want that. Doesn't matter. Right? Yes. But the point is, p- r- <laughs> you're proving that you can't spell. Period. You can't try it. You can spell period. P E R I. That's right. Let me spell it for you. Yes. I T F O R Y O U. So there we go. Yeah. Spelling's not the one as long as it. But but the point but the point is is we all want. Right. We're all desiring and saying, I'm giving, I'm doing this. Why aren't right. you, you know, meeting me halfway or uh, opening the door or whatever? So. Right, 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 right. So how you say it and uh, when you say it and all of that will either a convey respect and breed emotional safety and trust. Mm-hmm. And that way the, the walls are down or the gate is unlocked. You people can be free to free roam, to right? Roam. Or be what you say and how you say it. Free to roam, free, (laughs) free to roam around you. There you go. There you go. I like that. Or (laughs) you (laughs) too convey. It will either convey respect or it's going whatever you say or do. 
It's going to do one or the other. Mm-hmm. It's going to convey respect or it's going to convey disrespect and breed fear and trust. And that gate's going to lock up. But wouldn't you agree that most marriages that are, you know, fundamentally sound and good, they're doing well, that right. they're going to be moments of disrespect. Oh, yes. And you manage through those. And, and really what we're trying to talk about is when the culture or the... It becomes a pattern. Yeah, it becomes a pattern. It becomes the norm yes. within the relationship. Good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, we all get we're all snagged. Gonna, yeah, we're all going to deal with it. But if it becomes... The default. Listen, I'll tell you when that happens is when things get emotional. Mm-hmm. That's sure. when we fall prey. Yeah, and you what you're about to say may seem logical and fair to you, right? Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. you haven't learned the language of respect, which honestly is a major component of the Wife Savers course. Yes. I'd love right. to teach you. You talk about that all the time. If you haven't learned the lang- language of respect or grown up with good models of it, there's actually a good chance, even though you think it's logical and fair. Like this, mm-hmm. this is our letter writer who's mm-hmm. saying, I don't he see sees it, it but yeah. I don't see it. Right. Then there's a good chance that to some degree or other, what you're about to say is toxic and blame oriented, maybe even mm-hmm. manipulative, right? And manipulation is a form of emotional abuse, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And you're thinking, what, me, an abuser? Yeah. Emotionally yeah, yeah. abusive? No way. But it is possible. It's possible to not realize that you're going too far into those, what you just pointed out, patterns, Mm -hmm. toxic patterns. And and then what happens, a communication between spouses becomes more, instead of really just talking about things, they're really, it's more like browbeating. Yeah, and it's like you say, it's brainwashing to get something or to invoke something and uh, you know get your way, get your or, way, or to get exactly, back at. exactly, and that only induces serious insecurity, anxiety, confusion, shame. It doesn't help anyone. Sure. <laughs> so if you're really trying to get someone to acquiesce to your point of view or to change their behavior out of love and concern for you, right? It will usually do the opposite. Well, you know, there's a term called persuasion. Mm. And persuasion can be negative, but if you look at the actual definition of it, it's around reasoning. Oh. You know, and to be persuasive in so conversation. More intellectual is maybe? yeah, I think just more reasoning and, mm. and, and saying, you know, here are the reasons. Mm. Uh, and it's a very open. And yes. history, I mean, the, the root of the word. That right? really falls into the language of respect, I would say, yeah. That, yeah. that idea. That's lovely. I've never heard that before. Well, the problem with going the opposite way into the these forms of disrespect that we're going to talk about is that you may win someone's acquiescence or their obedience, mm-hmm. but you won't win their heart. Yeah, right, right. Right or, or allegiance? Yeah, certain approaches just don't work. They it 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 kills someone's desire to love you or to be loved by you. Yes. Okay. Well, we can't tackle every possible scenario. Here. <laughs> That's right. This episode will be on scenario one. <laughs> and we can't go into mental illness. No, that's right. You know, like narcissism or or bipolar or, or all that. Yeah, exactly. So we're just going to go. USC, whatever the. <laughs> Whatever they are, right? Not to make fun of those serious things, but we're going to just talk about maybe three or four just general common approaches. And here again, the problem is negative verbal language tone and phrasing. And that negative approach will present or represent an obstacle rather than a solution. Mm-hmm, sure. It will amplify obstacles that are not even present. Hmm. How do you amplify something that doesn't exist? That's a trick It's worrying about things in advance, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It will add a degree of blame. It will encourage an undesirable outcome. The receiver takes it personally and stops listening. It lays the grounds for conflict or for the deepening of existing conflict. It influences everyone to be resigned or inactive if they're feeling pessimistic. It demotivates the receiver to want to please, praise, or even get close to you. Did I convince you you don't want to be that kind of person? No, I don't. That was a long list. I don't don't want to be that. Show me how, Ramona. Tail between the legs here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to reframe these four common 
approaches that don't work so that we're more positive and we're going to use open-ended kind of questions. And now we're going to create, take obstacles and turn them into solutions. We're going to take defeats and make them victories. We're going to take <laughs> blame and turn it into credit and misunderstanding with clarity. You ready to be that kind of person? Well, I'm really good at snatching victory from the jaws of defeat uh, or snacking, <laughs> well, it's kinda like that. snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, actually. <laughs> but, you know, in business that those things are really important and, and it's common all the time in business and relationships for somebody to uh, complain and yes. to, you know, this is a problem, this is a problem. And any manager, any department head, they're like, would you bring me a solution? If this Don't is complain a real thing, unless you have a solution. Yeah, if this is a real uh -huh. thing, you approach it with from a solution based rather than a complaint. Ah. It's very, very different. And those are the people that are going to be much more successful in that world, in that environment, because right. it's all relationships. Right? And isn't it true that... Uh, women are that men will take complaints um as like there's a problem to be solved yeah sure and women will take complaints from their husband as yeah, you know like, you're, very personal yeah yeah you're yes. blaming me or whatever exactly yeah. all right so if we're gonna repurp a lot of peas in here appropriately reframe then we got to keep two attitudes in mind the first is equality Mm -hmm. Nothing else. If you can walk away from this podcast, yeah. remembering this, yeah, whatever you say, you've got to keep this forefront and center. Equality yeah. and curiosity. Curiosity. Yes. Don't you mm. want to know when you go through the gate, what's over that hill in the Cotswold? Oh, well, you have to have curiosity and you top it off with value. We're going to break now for just a minute so I can invite you to my free live masterclass, Understanding Your Husband and Sons. In my work with women in over 70 countries, I found that most of us, when it comes to our husbands and sons, think like Carol in Kenya. I was expecting him to think like me, behave like me. Or Dana in Utah. Shouldn't we just be the same and shouldn't we just agree? Or Anne in California. I grew up in a culture where there was a lot of eye rolling and sighing about guys. And that's too bad because when we act or react based on false expectations, we end up feeling like Catherine. I didn't feel I could relate to him because I didn't understand him. Or getting riled up like Carol made me mad. I was crazy. I was, uh, it was frustrating, you know? And acting like Anne. I used to think he should know what I wanted without me having to ask. Which just erodes our relationships and blows up our dreams. So that's why I created Understanding Your Husband and Sons, a super fun, eye-popping deep dive into his brain, body, and emotional makeup. Women have been coming from all over the world and coming away from our time together with an exhilarating sense of hope and power because now women like Amber, Anne, Dana, and Allison understand. How to communicate my needs. You know, how to be clear about it. How not to be run around, how not to manipulate. The way I communicate with him isn't any more aggressive or threatening to him. I can see why he's reacting or why he's responding that way. That's helped to avoid a lot of the hurt feelings that I used to have. So if like Jeannie in Canada, you're thinking, okay, I need to reboot how I think about marriage and men and how they're loved. Please join me at this free live masterclass, Understanding Your Husband and Sons. I'll teach you things you have never heard before and that you won't hear anywhere else. Science and strategies that will knock your socks off and make all the difference in your relationships. And it just changes everything about how I see him. There's this huge potential that I was not really tapping into because I didn't fully understand it. We're both so much happier now. And in how you see yourself. My confidence as a woman has skyrocketed. We've made it so easy. Just go to wifesavers.org slash masterclass and choose a day and time. I'll meet you there and even answer your questions live. Because like Carol in Kenya or Cindy in Argentina, you'll want to be able to say, Oh, 
oh, we are wired differently. And that's the beauty of life. And it set me free. It, it allowed me to say, okay, I understand now. And I loved him more than ever. Wifesavers.org slash masterclass. Equality, which is what? Respect. Right. That has the effect of keeping people's walls down, of leaving the gate open. Yeah, they right. feel like their opinion, their val- their insight, their point of view is just equal is with valued, yours. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because disrespect immediately puts somebody above someone exactly. else. Immediately. Exactly. Right. And curiosity has the effect of inviting them through the gate. So equality keeps the gate open. Mm. But curiosity says, so, come with me. Come curiosity is like, oh, I'm going to wait and sit here and see what happens. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Right. Oh, okay. No, no. I'm really curious to see where this is going to go. <laughs> this looks familiar. I think I've seen this movie before. <laughs> We're talking a very high level here. All right. Okay. I do, before we go into the four things approaches, though, I want to really drive home the point, the body language <laughs> is everything here, all right? And now you can't see me doing this. I'm, I'm going to make a YouTube video eventually where I will show you <laughs> yes, the body right. language. But as for now, if you're going to try and get away from disrespect, yeah. when you're displeased, oh, that's good. I'm like my body language. Listen, everybody, he's sitting back in his chair with his chin up, his eyes up, his eyes, he's looking down, yeah. his nose at me, <laughs> and his, guess what, arms are folded across his chest. Always, that's a bad sign, folded yeah, arms. Yeah. Bad beginning. Okay, I'm going to give this to you. See if you can do it. Eyebrows up. That's good. Shoulders down. That's good. <laughs> Open chest. All right, so <laughs> that's a little much. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got a shirt on. You need an open chest. That looks, that's the Superman pose. That looked more like a face-off. We don't want to do oh, that. Oh, okay. Okay, well, it's just open chest like an open heart. Oh, not super. Not calling Superman here. So, dun, dun, dun. Well, well, hands on hips, uh, <laughs> chest out. Shoulder to shoulder when you're talking with a, mm-hmm, your yeah, guy. Yeah, talked about that. Always works. We've talked about that a lot. Um it's better if you're not sitting or standing. Like you're both sitting or what you're are you both lying standing. Down? No, no, oh. no. You're <laughs> you both can't sitting. Sit, you you're can't both stand. Standing. Because if you're standing and you're, I've done this to you. Be supine, supine or I'd prone. Be, be Which one do you want? You. Back in my dumb wife days, <laughs> I would berate you by making sure I was standing and you were sitting, or else mm. you were in bed or something. That's when that's when I come in for the kill, <laughs> because I'm taller than you at that point. See, that we don't want that. And uh, anyway, so walk and movement, that's all good if you want to talk about things that you're unhappy about. Okay, here we go. This is something you don't ever want to say, want to stay away from. (laughs) You never want to say (laughs) you always or you never. Yeah, right. I never say that. This is a... (laughs) Any message that communicates you did something wrong you made a big or serious or stupid mistake, mm-hmm. or you have a defect or issue or problem. You never. You have a problem. Right. You have a mistake. You, you did you, stupid. You, you, you did something you. wrong. That is so disrespectful. So it makes us feel more morally superior when we say it. it. Feels a little good there for a minute, but it's very uncomfortable mm-hmm. for the receiver. And really, inside, I think we feel a little uncomfortable ourselves when and, we start throwing that around. Starting any sentence with "you," yes, is puts it, the defense mechanism out there already. And there's lots of ways to rephrase things where you don't have to start with "you." Yes, right, absolutely. Get In your fact, point out there. Uh, I've heard women say to men, "You should." You should work on this. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, I'm just making a helpful suggestion. But right. it starts with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or you should explore. You should, yeah. should never be yeah. put together. <laughs> you and should should not be next to each other <laughs> exactly. in a sentence. <laughs> not not should shoulder you? to shoulder is good, but not should to should. <laughs> no, that didn't make Don't any start. sense whatsoever. Should you, should you choose? <laughs> no, to... you should. Okay. <laughs> no, you nevers. No, you always is. Yeah. Because this is what we're telling ourselves. This is what the counterfeit self is saying. I'm just being helpful. I'm mm-hmm, being constructive. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. Right. Right. But criticism is only helpful and constructive when it's asked for. 
or request it when the gate is open from the inside. That's a tough one for for people to figure out. And our the last uh, YouTube video we did was right. we Ouch, did is all, hurts. all about that. And uh, because it's and I'm guilty of it. Just I'm being helpful. Right. I want right, to put right. it out there. That's what you're telling yourself. But right. here's your real motivation. Oh, now we're going to find out what the motivation um, was. Going okay. into that brain of yours, your real motivation is that what the other person is doing, their behavior is problematic to you. You make it sound like it's mm. problematic to them. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. you should explore, you should think about, you would be happier if, that kind of stuff. But what you're really concerned about is their behavior is a problem to you. That's, it doesn't yeah, fit that's, inside your Yeah, your box. box. Right. Hmm. That's interesting to think about. And I, but I think we're all, you know, by nature, we're selfish creatures. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to get what we want. And so we're trying to get the other person to do something that will benefit us. Yeah, but, but we, we think we it's say, benefiting Look, them. this is going to be helpful to you. <laughs> right. Um, exactly. If you really, I, you know, really I do that, I, you know, this is kind of a thing for us. I see you fumbling with something or struggling. And I said, well, no, here's how you do it. You want to, you know, cut along this line and fold it over this way right. or you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Because I'm thinking it's so much easier if you just do it yes. this way. And that's called unintended criticism. Mm. I mean, you don't mean to hurt or offend no. me. But the truth is, it's really bugging you that I'm doing it that way. Yeah, that's true. Because, but but it's it's true because there's a, there's such a better way to do it, and and I'm trying to help you. And you are pointing out exactly See. why it's disrespectful. Okay, if you can't win that one, I guess. The reason it's disrespectful is you are asserting superiority. Mm. Yeah, I know true. better than you do. <laughs> Interesting. Do you want to know a better way to do it? Okay. Yeah, I need okay. a better way to do it. <laughs> After I, after all these years, I, I am the queen it out. of a better way. <laughs> <laughs> so reset your heart. That's the first thing we're going to do. So every one of these, we're going to reset our heart. Their behavior generally worries, troubles, whatever you, and you can see that it does them or others some kind of harm. All right. So if you're really feeling that, that real genuine concern and love then you can go ahead and confront them, if you will, or uh, bring it up, invite them <laughs> in to the through the gate, because what you're really doing is conveying genuine concern for them. So we're going to reframe it. We're going to remember our body language. Do you remember what it is? Eyebrows up, chin down, chest, chest, out. chest out. I remember that part. <laughs> Here, here's how you can say the same thing. You said or did this. I want to be honest. It concerned me. How do you feel about it? Hmm. Okay. Or here's another so one. So you're asking for them to articulate. No, I'm concerned about yeah. what you just said or did. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, that reaction seems a little out of character, out of context to me. It's not normal for you. Are you okay? Something's going on. You want to talk? And I, Yeah, that's good because I think we all... Uh, communicate our, our communication is uh, influenced so much by how we feel or what's happened yes. in our lives. Yes. Tired, hungry, yes. uh, upset over yes. something else that's totally separate, and, but it influences us dramatically in communication. Do you hear though in yeah, those yeah, yeah. couple of uh, options that there's equality and curiosity in mm -hmm, there? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm perceiving it this way. How do you feel right, about it? Right. Open. More openness. There's, yes. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So here's the second one that the second approach that doesn't work that pushes them away instead of drawing them in through the gate. Right. That's your version of the truth. It's not the truth. Yeah. So that, discounting what they, <laughs> well, their perception. Discounting what they think, but also inferring that you know the right way. Exactly. Again, we're back truth. to that superiority yeah, stance. Right. What your counterfeit self is saying to yourself in justification is, I'm helping them see the big picture. That's right. I'm helping them put their behavior into context. That's your truth. That's yeah. how you see the truth, but it's not the I'm truth. I'm being so right? helpful. Right, right. But what you're really doing when you say something like that, 
is you're making someone doubt their reality. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, okay, so <laughs> that's, a, that's really kind of uh, psychoanalysis, doubt your reality, but right. but it's really true that it's, it's very not undermining. giving it's any, sabotaging. any credence to a right. person's right. position, point of view, right. otherwise. Because here's the truth of the truth. Everything oh, is... this is the truth, by the way. Here it comes. Everything is our version of the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We miss details and subtleties, right? Yeah, we remember the things we want to remember. Right. But that doesn't mean that our experiences is totally invalid. No. So... Right. The, I work by alternate facts. Alternative <laughs> facts, I think. What do they call it? <laughs> well, coming thing coming from that point of view, so that's not well. That's your version of truth, but it's not the truth or everything. What does it do? It just the outcome inspires shame, defensiveness, anger, mm -hmm. and it slams the gate that's shut. Right. right, right, right. Pushes them away. So, how are we going to do it better? We're going to reset our heart. We're going to acknowledge the differences in perceptions, and we're going to communicate. Mm -hmm our experience or our perception and draw them in as an equal expressing a desire in the form of a question to better understand together. So we're playing okay. play Jeopardy is what you say. Frame it in the form of a question. Exactly. Oh no, that's so true. Hmm. That's so true. Here, here's, here we go. That's so interesting that you experienced it that way. That is how, this is how it looks or feels to me. From mm -hmm. my perspective, what mm -hmm. do you think? You see, almost I always add, "What do you think?" at the end. Yeah, the curiosity thing that you know that's an easy takeaway. I think I'm sitting here thinking, you know, this for for people who feel like they're in a culture of disrespect and they want to mm -hmm. change it and fix it, like we talked about, it becomes chronic. It's like, how do you start? Where do you begin? Mm -hmm. And I think that's an easy. Uh, thing to curiosity implement is this questions. idea of curiosity because mm. you just add this to the end of what you're already saying maybe yeah right and maybe right. that's the first step right type thing I, I think that's good so yeah but what you just did in the example was you're acknowledging what they've experienced yes but you're saying I said that's interesting, interesting i didn't right? judge it right that's and interesting saying uh-huh why you know this is how it looks why. or feels to me right Right. So here's another way of saying it. We've clearly experienced this differently. And I'm really curious to understand why mm -hmm. that is. What did I say or do that gave you that impression? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. how can we work together to get on the same page? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, it's that mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Okay. Here's approach three that pushes them away instead of drawing them in. Okay, so now let's say he's come to you with a hurt or concern for your troubling behavior. They've come to you saying, mm -hmm. I'm worried about you. I don't like what you said that, or did or okay, whatever. Okay. And here's a way that you totally discount what they just brought to you by saying, I don't think I said or did that, but if you say so, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's full of all sorts of interesting things. Or... Maybe that's what you heard in your head, but that's not yeah. what I said. Yeah. How many times do spouses say to that to each other? Maybe that's what you heard, but that's not what I said. That That's very common. But this idea of if you say so, then okay. I mean, nobody believes that statement. Mm, right. 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 And so it's, it's false. Yeah, it's false. But it's also either you're giving up yes. and you don't want to try to solve it. Right. But you gave up by squishing yeah. Totally squashing their POV. Yeah, yeah. and that, uh, exactly. And well, if you feel that way, well, okay, you're way off your rocker, but uh, exactly. okay. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what you think your motivation is or what your counterfeit self is saying is, I'm allowing them a right to their point of view no matter how wrong it is. <laughs> so you think, I'm the big person here. I'm letting them have their yeah. point of view, even though it's really, really wrong. Yeah, and you'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> you'll figure it out. You, you'll see it my way. And, and it, it feels okay, except what your motivation is, really. Yeah, right. I, everyone, no one wants to hear these painful things, but <laughs> is that you want them to doubt themselves. Hmm. You want to make it difficult for anyone to ever discuss your problematic behavior with you. 
it keeps you off the hook. Yeah, it just uh, like yeah, you uh, don't think you deserve or questioning. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes yeah. to you and says, "That really hurt Johnny the way you spoke to him so gruffly tonight, honey," and he says, "Well, if that's how you see it, well, okay." Yeah, I'm just toughening. I'm toughening him up or whatever. Or I, that's not what I that. said. Right. Don't, yes, he came across very gruffly. I was not gruff. Well, if that's what you heard in your head, fine. But that's not really what I yeah. said. See what yeah. I said? And it's like. You it's, can't yeah. ever approach me about yeah, my problematic yeah. we're not, behavior. We're not going to talk about it. Right. right. Off limits. Can't go there. But let's flip it. He comes to her and says, you know, that was, you were pretty hard on the kids tonight, honey. And she says, same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I was. Maybe that's what you heard. Maybe that's your perception, but that's not my perception. Again, she's mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm kept herself off the hook. She's not willing to reflect on maybe there's some truth in what he's saying. Maybe yeah. there's some validity. No, no. Maybe the children are hurt and he could see it and she couldn't. She won't even consider it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll slam the gate. All right. Slam the gate instead of open the gate. And, you know. <laughs> All right. So again, that communicates uh, disrespect because you're disqualifying their experience and their perception. And it's right. just a way of asserting control and placing blame on somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the outcome only inspires, we're back to it, shame, defensiveness, frustration, and as you say, it slams the gate. So whew, take a breath. We're going to reframe our heart. And we're Chest going out. to... There you go. Assuming the position. We're going to acknowledge... That their perception has value. We're going to apologize for any inadvertent hurtful behavior. And then with a the question, we're going to draw them in as an equal to brainstorm a solution. Better way forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we go. Body language in place. Okay. Eyebrows yep. up. I'm ready. Shoulders down. Sorry. Shut down. Yep. Did I really say or do that? It's not how I meant to come across. I'm sorry I upset you. How, how can we try not to cross wires again? Mm-hmm. Hear yeah. that? Yeah, it, it, but it's that's hard for some people. You're it's, right. It's, a, it's especially humility if you're, oh. is just yeah. So really, just because really. it's hard, we shouldn't try. No, I don't mean that. It's just that you know, if you if you want to take in a relationship, the um, what's the right word that you know? These are the things that I generally care about or, or take care of, and these mm -hmm. are the things that you take care of. We each have our little uh, fiefdom, if you will, and. If you're going to, you know, criticize me about the way I'm dealing with my world within yes. the household. Women are real sensitive Yeah, to and that. But guys are too, because. Yeah, you know, you're right. Right. It's uh, you can't act as toughen up, get up, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. think that we're doing it for the benefit of the other person, like right. you said earlier. So. But this isn't an amazing idea to give credence, though, to someone else's point of view and to say, really, did I sound like that? Yeah. I right. didn't mean to come across that way. Wow, how can we try not to cross wires again? So would you say in your experience that if somebody does react very um, defensively, mm -hmm. like we examples you're giving. Everything that they, goes downhill fast. Sure. But do you think that they're really guilty in their heart? <laughs> Did they really when know? When we feel defensive? Yeah, do they? That's interesting. I wonder. I don't think that's true across the board, but I think they're... Well, it's definitely a, a an evidence of insecurity. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's a good way to wherever, put it. Wherever it is and whatever it's about, there's some kind of fears or insecurity. Evidence of insecurity. I used guilty, which is a little <laughs> you know more to the point, but evidence of insecurity. There it is. I like that. <laughs> Well, if I think of it as evidence of insecurity, I feel a little more compassionate. Like, oh, he's there. Mm. The, the other person is scared or afraid yeah. when I'm going on. Sure. What's really going on in there? Yeah. See, there's that curiosity yeah, thing yeah, coming yeah, into play. Right. Here's another way to say it. I, I'm really sorry that I behaved in a way that upset you or bothered you. That wasn't my intention. Listen, how would our best selves act or respond so we can avoid this kind of argument or misunderstanding. <laughs> Let's think about this. What, how would our best selves do this? I wasn't my best self, you know, help me out. What would be your best self? Mm. What does that look like? Wouldn't that be an interesting conversation? Yeah, it would be a very interesting conversation. I don't think I'll you tell and you I, what it looks like. Honestly, it looks you like and I this. have never said those <laughs> no, words. No, you You want to try next time? Are you with me? Oh, I know if it's right now. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, next time we butt chest heads. Out, chest out, I'm ready. Next time we butt chest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You'll win that one, but <laughs> let's try this best sounds idea. Okay. I, okay, I'm willing to back down and let's try again. Now. Okay. Okay. And the... my best self would do it this way. How about your best self? Do <laughs> your it? turn. You, let's see your best self. Fire away. Let's see how you do. Okay, and then we'll come back in our next podcast and report on what happened. <laughs> All right, let's do. <laughs> Film at eleven. All right, we're gonna wrap this up with a couple quotes. Of people who are smarter oh, than we are. Say, okay. <laughs> get to work. Yeah, go, yeah, this is a quote Stop by doing that. Russell Nelson. Okay. And he said, differences of opinion may occur. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> between husband and wife. But one's objective in marriage is never to win an argument, but to build a relationship of love. Well, I agree. I've always been trying to win, though. I'm mm -hmm. all about winning. That's wrong. Yeah, but but I think that that's really point is there. I think there is a uh, default attitude in a lot of people about winning. I have to win, and you, I've, but I've in seen marriage, that. It's yeah, not no. It's true. Marriage is totally different than any other relationship. That's for sure. And any other uh, dynamic, like in the workplace, yeah, and but, how but, you relate to employees. But or, if that's how you, if that's your default go to this way mm -hmm. I am that there's but there is this attitude I think in a lot of people of I have to win and guess what right that's an evidence of insecurity okay. well <laughs> guilty <laughs> uh, this is beautiful beautiful thought from um Rabbi Levi Mir. Meyer. Meyer, of if course. You're going to be specific. You can tell I'm not Jewish. I'm so sorry, Meyer. He's a clinical psychologist and he wrote Ancient Secrets, but he's the author of Ancient Secrets, but Loving Kindness Healing Words. It's sort of a poem. He said, To consider. That's one line. Okay. To consider. So we're considering what we're about to hear. Yes. Do my words respect the divine image of another? Mm. Are my words intrusive or impolite? Am I conscious of my tone of voice? Am I conscious of the language of my body? I got that one. Do my words seem to include or do they exclude? Do I speak about someone the same way I speak to him mm, or her? That's a good one. That yeah. is. Do I speak about someone mm -hmm. the same way I speak to him or her? Will my words diminish the dreams or spirits of another? Will my words bring healing and peace? Mm -hmm. Will my words hurt another? Should these words be spoken? Now? That's a good question for a lot. Uh, Should is these this words the right be spoken time? and now? Yeah, right, yes. right. Are my words true? Mm -hmm. Are my words kind? Can my words anticipate a need? Will my words help another? How can my actions supplement my words? That's really... That last one, you know, where you're, I like the word copacetic, right? We're in, in a sync about how we act versus what we say. But I think about these are fabulous questions to ask yourself. And, you know, how do you start? How do you start that? I hope that our discussion, our conversation today will give everyone a great place to yeah, start. Yeah, and take some Remember ideas. Remember the Cotswolds? And how the gate, the gates, mm -hmm. and the private property, and you want that gate open. You want to invite in. And how do we do it? Equality, curiosity, and chest out. 
So honey, you know the old adage, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Yeah. The answer is no. No. Because a sound has to be received. Uh -huh. And that's why I love our subscribers so much. They're receiving our sounds. <laughs> we wouldn't have a podcast without no. them. And I wouldn't have a free live masterclass understanding your husband and sons. If people don't sign up, they got to go to wifesavers.org slash masterclass. Home is with you wherever that may be.